All right, we also have, in June, an election coming up. And I'm grateful that the Secretary of State uh, worked with us and that uh, everybody, anybody, uh, that, that qualifies for the primary election is going to be able to vote via absentee. I'm waiting for the portal to come up that the Board of Elections is working on, and then I will show everybody how to go online and sign up to get their absentee ballot. You're also going to get a postcard in the mail uh, that will uh, advise you on how to do that too. One of our biggest challenges, one of the biggest concerns that I had about this election, and I've talked about it a lot, is the fact that we have a lot of poll workers uh, that um, fall in this vulnerable category. Just about every poll worker uh, where I used to vote uh, would fall into that category. And how, because we have to have some limited amount of in-person voting, because there's some folks that might not even have a, uh, a regular uh, address how we were going to do it safely. Uh, and then uh, General Lamberton uh, offered uh, what I thought was a great solution when he offered the help of the National Guard in carrying out uh, this election, uh, using folks that we know uh, are healthy, that have the PPE that is uh, needed, and that are trained to take special safeguards. So we are now in very uh, uh, good discussions uh, with uh, the Secretary of State and others about how we can serve this role, ensure that those poll workers aren't placed um, in any type of, of situation that we would not want them to be in. And I'm really grateful uh, that they made uh, this offer that'd be done in, in the right way with people in uh, civilian clothes, but a real opportunity uh, to do this with a method where we know that people will be safer. So I wanted General Lamberton uh, to say a, a few words uh, because I will tell you, he came to me uh, with this idea, and that's the exact type of leadership and servant leadership that we need. Thank you, Governor. I appreciate it. As the Governor said, a lot of the folks who work in our polls, these are very much folks who are in our at-risk categories. And so with the impact of the pandemic, as many of you are already tracking, it, uh, it already has impacted our election cycle, not only for the primary, but we'll see what occurs in the, the general election next fall as well. So, so quite simply, as many of you who are familiar with the, the Guard in particular, we literally are spread out over the entire state. And I would offer that we probably have soldiers or airmen who live in virtually all of 120 of our counties. So it, it quite simply is kind of a common sense solution for, for the issue. We've been in contact and already uh, working with the executive director for the State Board of Elections. He in turn is going to share this information with all the county clerks through his exchanges with them. And that I, I would also offer by virtue of speaking with the executive director. Another concern that he shared with us is the uh, prospect of a cyber threat to uh, our election cycle. And in the National Guard, we've got what we refer to as CPTs or cyber protection teams. Th these CPTs have a uh, capability, an IT capability uh, of simply getting together with various systems and assessing the, the vulnerability of these systems and, and perhaps offer some sort of a, a solution towards that resolution. And, and for those folks, whether it's engagement through the State Board of Elections to the, the county clerks. Uh, the best way to, to go ahead and engage us if this is something you're interested in, work it through the Executive Director of the State Board of Elections. When we went into this uh, agreement to address cyber threat issues across the, the Commonwealth, we did this in conjunction with the Commonwealth Office of Technology the uh, Kentucky Office of Homeland Security. So, so it's more than just your National Guard stepping out on it, but also if any local government is interested in engaging with our CPTs, work it through the Kentucky Office of Homeland Security or once again the State Board of Elections, and we'll be there for you. Thanks, sir. Thank you. And let's remember who our Guard are. They're our neighbors, our friends. Sometimes they're our doctors, our veterinarians. Uh, they're people that uh, work right alongside us. Uh, one of our paralegals in the Attorney General's office. These are folks we know, and they're folks that at times of, of crisis step up 
uh, put back on a uniform uh, and get the job done. So before anybody um, uh, uh, thinks that, that, that this is um, big government in any way, this is your neighbor. This is your neighbor who is volunteering and who is ready to help us out in this election. Also, register to vote. You still have time. You can do it online. This is part of your civic duty. Follow the 10 rules, fill out the census, and register to vote. These are just three hallmarks of citizenship in the world we live in right now uh, that is easy to accomplish, especially when we're healthy at home and we have time. You still have until May 26th, elect.ky.gov. Uh, you know, I've, I've told you I'm not doing politics. Uh, this is a civic duty. Regardless of your party, you should register, you should vote. That's one of the things that makes our democracy uh, so strong.